And a one and a two. Brian Myers. I've never called you Brian Myers out loud yeah, weird, until right? right now. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. What's going on in your world? You're a busy guy, huh? Super busy. Yeah. Which is a good thing in pro wrestling. But uh, yeah, crazy busy. Too busy. Well, no rattle, time. Rattle off some of the things because I mean, yeah, I mean, just going through your your bio, your history, the things that you're doing now um, between being in the ring, outside the ring. I mean, you are booked and busy, baby. I mean, well, first and foremost, I'm happily married and uh, the father of two insane little girls that I love to death. <laughs> so that is a uh, job number one that keeps me very much on my toes. But as mm -hmm. far as pro wrestling, the major wrestling figure podcast, which has just grown into something absolutely unbelievable yeah. uh, full-time full with impact wrestling as well as you know my independent wrestling dates and signings and things like that and i'm the uh, co-head trainer of creative pro wrestling academy Good where i'm Lord. training guys and uh yeah so it just it never ends okay so starting off with what you started off with being happily married with kids how do you how do you Book your own schedule to make time for all of the things, to be in all of the places. I feel like I'm still figuring this all mm -hmm. out. So teach me. Well, Take I'm not under your learning I'm not, tree. I'm not saying what I do is perfect <laughs> by any means. And it, no, it, but what it, works for you? It never will be. You know, I mean, I literally an hour ago realized that I can't go to like a wedding with my wife this summer because I have an impact wrestling date, you know? Whoops, whoops. So, but that's part of the biz, you know? What is the communication like between you and your wife? For her to know where you're gonna be, and how do you guys do that? Because okay. God, sometimes we hit roadblocks. I'm like, are you kidding me? How did I not okay. know you had to leave to go do this thing? This I do have advice on, and this is all credit to my wife. She's amazing. She made a mutual calendar, so when I can link something on our phones. So like we've since my post WWE career, we've had this now this system where before. Like you said, just roadblock after roadblock when you don't know. But yeah. now I literally know and I put something in. She's seeing it, too. So she doesn't <laughs> even ask me but like, hey, what are you doing Saturday? Oh, no, I know you have a signing in Philly. You know, we don't have. Yeah, that's as, smart. Much, as much, you know, miscommunications anymore. Yeah. So that, that was a big game changer. And I'm a technology idiot. So that was all her and her. I didn't even know that was a thing that you could do. But. OK, so see, that's what I need to do, because I put everything I do in my phone because like my own schedule is insane. And mm -hmm. then adding in John's schedule to that. Yes, yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on right it's now? One, it's one click. I just hit Brian and Liz and then it goes to the you know <laughs> double. Okay, you know? I'm going to be yeah. messaging your wife and go, how did you do this? <laughs> yes. Can you give me some yeah. kind of like database in yeah. order to like structure all of these things? So that's been um, a big game changer. But like I said, I'm going to miss this wedding because I have wrestling and that's just part of the lifestyle you sure. know you know we reap so sure. many rewards for what we do but then there's things like that that you know i would say a civilian doesn't really run into problems like that as much but that's that's the give and take of the business you know and um i think my thing is i kind of over deliver when i am home you know which sure. my, my wife probably doesn't you know appreciate that much but it's like <laughs> oh you took the girls out you guys you bought them whatever they wanted and ice cream and you know and hey, dads, just, do what you got to do. That's just kind of the way I am. Yeah. Is. Um, okay. Two things. One, what is the most important thing that you have missed due to being a professional wrestler for the past God, however many years? Um, we I do have to pick and choose these battles. And it is know. hard sometimes. I'm not you're like, oh sure my gosh. if I've like been around for one actual anniversary. A lot of our lives is celebrating mm -hmm. things. Not on the Not actual on the date day. that they are. Yeah, I think I've yeah. missed several birthdays. And the girls are little enough that I, you know, if I'm there for the party because we've planned that months ahead and we know, sure. you know, things like that. But the actual physical day that would be their birthday or, or a lot of our anniversaries, yeah. I've, I've certainly missed a ton. And I missed yeah. a ton of fr like good friends, weddings and things like that. Or the ones that I, I feel exceptionally bad about is if I miss like a funeral or something that oh, I should probably yeah. be at. And that's yeah. like way out of my hands, you know, something unexpected like that. I feel like I kick myself a lot in hindsight now. And I think as my life changes of being married, having my own daughter, those things that like when my friends were all doing that far before I was, I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. cool. And like admiring it from a distance and now yeah. realizing to me how important all those things are. I'm like, Oh my God, what a piece of shit that I yeah. missed oh. these weddings and I missed these birthdays. And like, it, yeah, they just, they didn't like quite hit the radar the same way that yes. it does now. And now I have like this, like it, this like burning um, guilt that is yeah. hard to shake Be off. Becoming mm -hmm. a parent changes you in an epic way that like 
you're kind of saying is unexplainable to people that aren't there yet. Yeah. And then once you know, you know, and it's just one of those things. It's just, it's absolutely life changing. Like I was the guy on a flight before I had a kid with a baby's crying. I'm like, man, shut the, someone shut this baby up. Now I'm like, there's a baby crying on the flight. What, what should we do? Like, I'm, I'm like, you know, it just changes everything about you as a person, you know? I know yeah. when I'm traveling without yeah. Nora now and right. I see like a little girl near or a little boy, whatever. And then especially if you see like a solo parent traveling. Oh, like, like struggling. I yeah. You. Oh, I see yeah. you. Yeah. It's crazy. It is not easy. Everyone's like mm. already stressed waiting before they get on that flight. Um, okay, my second question to you is because you've been a professional wrestler for so long, your body has been put through the ringer. How is it getting down on the ground and playing with your kids and keeping that energy up? How it, do that's you do hard. That? that is hard. That is hard. Especially <laughs> my kids yeah. are five and a half and two and a half, and they're like full Easy. of energy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my my two-year-old idolizes my five-year-old, wants to do whatever she wants to do. And mm -hmm. she she's excelled so much faster and quicker and things like that. Um. But it's a blast. You know, I try like yeah. I just try to live in the moment when I'm home because I am away so much, you know. So when they ask me to play with their Barbie dream house, I'm staring at it over here. You know, I <laughs> I do. Yeah. Buckle up. Do yeah. what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about your career now. Um, you obviously have a ton of success working with Impact, all the things you have rattled off from the podcast. And we'll get into that stuff, too. Um, obviously, a very different time in wrestling now as opposed to when you left WWE before and you were still working the indies you were out there doing tna like you were out still busy doing things but mm -hmm. the business has still changed a lot in th those god almost 10 years yeah. how is the business different and how is your career different now it, it's certainly uh different i, I kind of said this to someone the other day in an interview like you know there's the 80s rock and wrestling and the attitude there and we're living in something right now it doesn't have a name yet yeah yeah <laughs> you know, what would you no name it what would you i don't name know this version uh the tony connor i don't know uh <laughs> Because he's 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 pretty much to thank, I think, for, you know, sure. all the jobs and opportunities, you know, that weren't there mm -hmm. before that, you know, it was a monopoly. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely fun and it's something um, I, I think through the podcast, Matt and I have Matt Cardona and I, we've really found like kind of a cheat code to the business mm -hmm. because we really work for ourselves now and we don't have to be employed by anyone to get by, like certainly not at all anymore. And yeah. that's does we don't have to like beg for things and it's, it's it's a big difference you know it makes a really big difference when you're in that position of power where it's just like you know i and I, it's unbelievable to me that like i could break my leg tomorrow and still make a hell of a living just Isn't talking about talking about wrestling toys which i love you know it's like still yeah. doing still doing what i love so it's it's a very very uh fortunate position to be in and it's just kind of cool how it all played out like this was there ever a time in your career, and you've been doing this for such a long time, when those opportunities weren't around and there wasn't, I don't want to call it like a safety net because it's not that it's a safety net. The world has just changed and these opportunities have changed. Would there have ever been a moment earlier on in your career where you would have been like, maybe this isn't for me for longevity purposes? Uh, no, actually, it's crazy. I just, um, well, one, I, I think that's a negative mindset. If you really want to do something to have like, sure. I, and I know it's terrible advice to some no, people. No, but I've know, always the, been like that to go to college and this and that. Yeah. And I was like, do my mom, I, we were, an education. my mom and I were talking about the other day. I was like, you know, I'd be like, I don't care about this. I don't, what I want to do, I don't need school. And I'm just in that situation. Like, I know that's important to people in life and stuff, but I'm, I'm pretty sure like I'm going to do this and that, that it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I just, it all worked out for some reason. I've, I, yeah. there was definitely lean years in my, my first WWE firing and where wrestling wasn't thriving like it is now, you know, sure. where I was like, man, should I start like Ubering during the weekdays or something? You know, right. but like, right. then, then Mark Carano called and rehired me just when it was getting a little iffy, you know what I mean? So I've just, just had 203 I've number had, pop I've up had, on your yeah, phone. Yeah. I've had that, you know, kind of dumb Irish luck my whole life. Yeah. Beyond but, you know, wrestling. I I agree with you to that point. I remember like God early on in my career, I was reading this book from a uh, Janice Joplin book. And there was this quote about that too, about like not having a fallback plan because you mm -hmm. will fall back on it. And that like really stuck with me um, that I was just like, nope, I'm going to stay the course. And you, you just find a way. And I think that that has been like another thing, I think almost to what this other, this generation is as well too, is like finding those other ways, finding mm -hmm. those other avenues, whether it's yeah. doing indie bookings and doing signings. And that's always existed. It's just such a different vibe than it and, is now. And I think, I think Matt, kind of started that in wrestling and doesn't really get his full credit yeah. for it. You Agreed. Know what I mean? yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I feel like I do feel like there's a, a a big group of people that really see 
what Matt has been able to do, especially in like his exit from WWE and all the amazing things he's been able to do to really turn people's heads. I do think he gets those accolades, but yeah, not even to the degree that he does. But he he started 11 years ago. This, yeah. his, his YouTube show that was like, yeah. you know, unthinkable. Yeah, unthinkable to do something like that. Crazy. It's so crazy. We're and make it work, you know, and make it work. Um, mm. Your relationship with Matt. What were the early days of like, what was the first meeting of you? And Matt? Oh God. It was like, uh, not exactly like stepbrothers, you know, when stepbrothers like, well, you, <laughs> you have to call me red dragon or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, cause <laughs> yeah. we, we, we were the same exact height, the same exact build. We had the same stupid little Abercrombie and Fitch haircut. Like shout out to Abercrombie. Yeah. They can come back everybody. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. And, and we were at this wrestling school and, he says it this way too. And I, I say too, like, I don't think a lot of people are like, man, I'm going to be the best tag team wrestler in the world. Like from day one, I think that's something you fall in love with when you get into the business, you know, you admire it, but I don't think that's like your goal because you're a person, you know, so you don't Mm -hmm. automatically think to be a tag team. So like we're both at this wrestling school only like a couple months in, we're staring at each other. Like this guy's my competition. We're the exact same. Like this isn't good. And we had, we both had the same mindset. Um, And then people were saying, well, you guys look alike. You should be a team. And we're both thinking like, that's not what we want to do. And we're very, very standoffish with each other. And Matt, yeah. you know, Matt is, he's not, he's pretty rude naturally anyway. You know what I mean? Like he's pretty, not exactly a people person. He can just have a bit of a rude face even yeah, without got, meaning to. Like a, it's not a resting bitch face. It's, it's like close, something. Though. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. in and around that yeah. neighborhood. <laughs> and he's, he can be like, you know, very firm with his responses. And th- I don't know. So I was like, Jesus. And then it really was wrestling figures that like broke the ice between us for, to make us like these great friends because back then you know 2003 you're not gonna like just go to wrestling school and tell these guys you collect wrestling figures or play with them or anything it was like sure beyond something you wouldn't do to like even like a grizzled indie veteran much less you know we eventually get signed and we're in the wwe locker room with undertaker and bob holly you think we're gonna tell them that we collect wrestling <laughs> figures like we'd be beaten to death you know so <laughs> um that really was the thing that broke the ice between us you know, to cement our friendship for years and years. So it even just like, I feel like if I were to close my eyes right now, like you guys even sound, I mean, I know that happens. We've been <laughs> friends with someone for such a yeah. long time. You guys have like the same cadence and everything. He, he's got the deeper Long Island, like Italian accent than me. Thank God. <laughs> I don't have that. No, you have like, a, you have a little something, something <clears throat> going on too. I can't put my finger on it, but there's a few times I'm like, oh yeah, you guys. All right. Little, Certain yeah. words and stuff. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So for you guys to be able to build your careers together, um, what was it like coming into work with Edge? Uh, you know, the, those like early days of like those edge head days, everything mm-hmm. that went on there again with you guys being such big fans and then to be put with somebody like edge, what, what were like those early conversations you guys were having with each other and like pitch wise. So literally we're 22 and we're on the main roster with no, there was net like whatever plans they had for us never happened. And so there was no plans for us and we were just drowning like 22 year old kids in a man's world. Like we were all, <laughs> we're going to work with men and we're not men yet. We're just idiots. And like just drowning on the main roster, like nothing for us to do floundering. And we thought this up in the car one night and then like edge and edge was a hello and goodbye guy to us at the time. You know, that, that was our whole relationship. See him in catering, say hello. And at the end of the night, see him say goodbye. That was about, it and i was like okay well what if we ha- tell him about this idea so we, we we garnished the courage to go up to him and say hey we have this idea and he said and it, you would think back on it like maybe this is the ultimate like blow off he's like here's my email email it to me <laughs> okay so then i was like okay either way he's like this respected veteran i said i was going to do something i got to do it now yeah so like we crafted this email i sent it to him and then like that it worked he read it and loved it and that got the ball rolling um you know and it made it all happen and like what i think really made it work so much is because it was real because matt and i were like truly just big fans of his yeah and we were green as hell and like truly learning from him watching him and mm-hmm. I, i've said this a million times in 2008 he's the best wrestler in the world he's the, he's the wwe champion the top guy he works the main event of the live events all the pay-per-views and we were we couldn't have had a better seat to watch him do it you know yeah. so it was this invaluable experience that i I think, and Matt, I'm sure will tell you too, like shaped our whole careers, you know? Yeah. Because it was like a, a insane zero to 60 thing. You know what I mean? How, so what were some of the things that you did learn from Edge that you kind of keep with you today? Uh, just like, 
the slowing down aspect of wrestling that's very hard for people and you know i see with my students and when you're just so new and excited and the 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 idea of doing nothing is scary you feel like you just need to constantly be doing something and that's not the case at all you know it's better to let things breathe and play out and it's it's hard to to control your emotions and your excitement to do things like that you know it's so funny when you like you mentioned being like 22 and being like a kid in a man's world and I feel now being 37 dun 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 like John and I were out of the Bengals game the other week I'm like oh my god like Joe Burrow is 25 I hate that in sport I'm a big sports fan so I hate thinking like yeah that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, I know you're a big Mets guy, but like yeah. when you see these guys and you look up like they're, they're like birth years, it's like, oh my God, like these are boys yeah. in this like man's world. And it's so crazy that like, I feel like in wrestling, it's nice. I mean, you get more of that maturation process, I guess, to a degree that a lot of times you don't really hit your stride until you're in like your mid thirties. Probably. Where like other sports, it's it's not always like that. You really got it like by 25, 26, you're in like your prime years. I get that for sure. That's that's scary to me. Like baseball, you could be retired by like 33. It's like, I what know. do you do with the rest of your life? Yeah. What do but, you do? But as to what you're saying, people are always surprised. They'll like, they'll talk sports with me and then they'll, they'll get into like college sports. And I do not follow college sports at all. Like I have no exactly. interest in it. And they'll like be like, what? Why? And I'm like. Well, to be honest, I know what immature dipshit I was in college. So, like, I don't want to be watching these guys on a Saturday. Like, I'm just thinking that the whole time. Like, these guys are thinking about doing keg stands and shit. They don't care. Like, totally. it's, hard, it's hard for me to get into. I know. I think that sometimes I'm, like, going to, like, interview some of these, like, Bengals players. And even, like, at AEW, it's got a very young roster. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my God, yeah. I feel so ancient right now that, like, there are these, like, kids that just have, like, the world ahead of them and, like, they have these big adult responsibilities. It's it's True. really crazy. Yeah. How did you feel like that? I mean, I know you talk, you know, you said by being a kid in like a man's world, but having those responsibilities pretty early on in life, like getting paid a decent amount of money yeah. and traveling the world. Like, how did you like manage all that? It, it was tough. It was like, uh, you know, give and go type thing. But like I, Matt and I were always very respectful because we're such fans, you know, I think that mm-hmm. ha- that helped, but it was also, we couldn't show that side and we knew enough to not to do that and just to be respectful with everybody. And uh, I mean, I, I, honestly, in WWE at that, that point, you're just, you're trying to avoid heat. You know what I mean? You're trying to avoid yeah. pissing someone off. That's yeah. going to tell someone and it's going to trickle and the heat grows, you know, that's like mm-hmm. the thing, you know, we knew back then what would get us heat at work. And we just avoided it. I think that was like Smart. the best thing we did. But but we did have to learn quick. You know, we're renting cars and doing all this stuff. And yeah. Crap, like crazy stuff that other kids my age were not doing for sure. Do you feel like that has changed a lot now? What do it's, you it, it might It might have changed too much. <laughs> it's changed too a much. lot. Not it might too have changed much, too like, much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just looking at like. I mean, yeah, everything you've been able to do and to be able to see having your own wrestling school, you're teaching mm-hmm. the new generation. What are you seeing from this generation? That's like so just too different? much entitlement, too much entitlement. Where does that come from? What I don't know, because that? I'm 37 now and I'm not 22, so I don't know. But like, it's crazy to witness. Yeah. What what I had maybe a little too deep what it is now too deep the other way. We need something to the middle because. Yeah, the entitlement that people have in the business nowadays is is wild to me. I mean, the story is, I don't know if it ages well, but like when we first got called up, you're not even allowed in the locker room. Right. So Matt Matt and I, our main roster talent, but we changed with extras in every building Mm -hmm. for at least the first three months. And then we had to like go up to Chris Benoit as the locker room leader and be like, sir, we've been on the main roster a couple of months now. We were like, no, it's okay if we could, you know, change with the boys and like got his blessing. But that was a big moment for you guys. I'm sure. Yeah, that's why I remember like... it so clear, but exactly. I, don't, I don't, I don't know if it needs to be like that extreme, you know, but you do need to have some kind of respect where like now but somebody new, somebody being... new starts and they, they throw the shit all out of the locker room. It's like, they own it. You know I mean? It's a big difference. Then <laughs> let's find the happy medium. That's all I'm saying. Even when you think of like, okay, you can say that that is extreme to like not change in the locker room, ask permission to get in that locker room, but it is that rite of passage. And like, did anything bad really happen from like not being in the locker room it just kind of like puts you in your place i'm sure some other shit yeah. really got went down but <laughs> yeah but I, yeah but you it makes you realize how low on the totem pole you are right you yeah. can't even change with the boys it's it really is crazy to see and like i keep trying to like kind of put my finger on it too where it's like god does everyone just feel like they deserve 
television time and they deserve to have 20 minute like and, matches like, and like that like there was times when i i felt this i don't know if it's necessarily true but when i was doing like the losing streak yeah. in WWE, i felt like people thought like these people that didn't love the business or care about maybe like football player yeah. developmental people would think like i sucked because i lost all the time right not right, that right, i was right. playing this character that did that and it was entertaining you know like that right. part is like yes. a little you know, you know, how do about, we scale you know. it back? What needs to happen to scale <laughs> things know. back? Because it really is so far the other way. Where... Eh, it's got to come from up top. You know what I mean? It's got to come from yeah. management or top, top locker room guys, you know? Right. Or I know. The, it's I, like... I always say that I love the quote that the first guy through the wall is the one who gets a little bloody. You know what I mean? The first sure. one to say, hey, you kids are being a bunch of assholes. Let's tone it down, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And like, I don't know if it's like, as I keep trying to like kind of put my own finger on, I'm like, is it because of like social media and everyone's social media is just like curated to them? So everyone's just reading how great they are all the time from their that, fans. And like, that's I great. think that's another big problem in the business. I think people, you know, the people start blocking everyone that says everything bad to them. And the next thing yeah. you know, their whole timeline is just like er, all you. praise yeah. and it's, yeah. it's messes up your self and, you know, impression. Like, I don't know. I don't block we, anyone. I like people telling me I have to fuck <laughs> off. I think it's whatever. It's not going to ruin sound, my day. Do we sound yeah. so disgruntled right now? Oh, my gosh. I just am a realist <laughs> that, like, you know, I pretend fight in spandex with my friends right. for money, and I don't need to take it that seriously. I take it seriously, but yes. I don't need to take it that seriously, if you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, of course. You know? Of course. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the losing streak um, gimmick, How? what was, like, the pitch for that? There was no what, pitch. What were, like... <laughs> I just kept the train going. No, no. What really happened? Uh, I mean, man, they they brought me back in 2016. I'll never forget. Road Dog called me and was like, "I want, I personally want you on the SmackDown roster." And then he had big plans for me. And then it just like absolutely never happened for whatever reason. I still don't know to this day. Yeah. Uh, I think I beat Apollo Cruz once, and then I just never won again. And I was just, I had been in WWE already, so like I knew how the place you know worked. And goes. I was just, yeah. you know. I go out there and do the do whatever's asked of me to the best of my abilities. That's just always, like I said, it's not real. I don't take it personally that I'm putting someone over or whatever. Would I like to win? Of course, we all would. But I'm just going to do my job to the best of my abilities. Mm -hmm. So one day, I want to say I was on the road, and I kept getting tweeted this like article of fans like commenting. And I'm like, what? And it was some dirt sheet road article that I had lost 100 matches in a row. <laughs> but like, Great. instead of like being all sad about it, I'm like, well, that's definitely true. You know? Yeah. Okay. And then... Uh, I was pitching to the writers like this losing streak, yada, 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 like whoever would listen would listen, think it's cool, whatever. And I'd probably surprised that somebody was not many people in wrestling, you know, willingly want to lose all the time. But I, I had the foresight to see that maybe there's something there. And then I'll never forget one day at Barclays, this writer comes out of the writer room. He goes, today's your day, Hawkins. You're going to beat Heath Slater, a main event. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, people aren't even going to remember that by the time they leave this building. Much less. like I'd, I said, yeah. I'd rather like just keep this losing streak thing going and see where it goes. And they were like, you sure? And I said, I said, it was Vince who said in the meeting, like, let's give Hawkins one in his hometown. I said, let me get, I said, if I just ask you this, is Vince the only one, you know, a uh, part of this, you know, creative team that doesn't know about the streak? And they were like, that's probably a safe bet. I was like, can we at least like tell him and see if he cares? Yeah. And then once it was in his brain, then that was it. Then it was never discussed again. It was just a thing. And we have talks about it. Like where I pitch stuff, you know, I, I showed him the T-shirt that was like a oh, good seller. He loved that, like things like yeah. that. And there was yeah. at one point in Raw, there was a countdown clock thing that me and Vince came up with. You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just like, you know, would we all love to be Roman Reigns? Yes, but there's only so many spots like that on the show. You know, you know we're not all Zach Morris. Sometimes we got to be hanging out at, at the uh, the the cafe in the background, sure, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. I'm still part of the team, and I'm still part of the show. And I was, I did. I never made more money. Had more fun. Like it was, it was incredible, actually. The, yeah. and then. The crowd organically turned me babyface, which is something I never even <laughs> thought was possible. But people started yeah. to feel bad for me. You know, there was real sympathy, and they yeah. would be at these. We'd be at these live events in Bumblefuck, and people would be going nuts cheering for me because they wanted just to be a part of it. To be like, hey, yeah. I was there when he won. You know, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. No, I. I mean, I remember like call like calling some of those matches and like discussing that stuff. And yeah, it really was. It's cool when something organic like that can just happen, and you get behind it and you make something did, of it. You know. To be fair, did I think it was going to go two hundred and sixty nine? <laughs> no. No, but it's actually I, pretty impressive. That's it's wild. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, I, 
Did I think it was going to 269 losses? No, but it was all yeah. worth it. And I used to, I mean, I used to never envision like people like, how do you want this to end? And I was like, I don't want to think about that because it's so much easier for me to come into work and be like, what's your finish? I'll take it to the best I can. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah, like yeah. almost no politics in wrestling for me. It was like really great time. And if I just kept daydreaming about winning and how it would end, it wouldn't be as fun. And then without me doing that, and I don't know how this happened, but it ended in the best way imaginable like i could have yeah. never written that up like yeah. oh no win the tag team titles with your best friend in your hometown building like at wrestlemania like how crazy so talk to me about like that moment um for you and matt to be able to have that moment against ftr revival at the time um to be able to have that moment i mean what a that's like the the career not a career defining moment but everybody wants their mania moment and sounds like you had like a pretty perfect one yeah i mean like i said it's like a storybook thing that i couldn't have written if you asked me to write down like how to do it right it just kind of mm -hmm. fell into our lap and to be honest, I, I, I think it was two things. I think FTR asked to defend the tag titles. I think they that was important to them to as the tag team champions to represent them on the show. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, Matt and I had an idea about like incorporating the losing streak stuff into the Andre Battle Royal, which we just completely assumed we were in, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like we just assumed. <laughs> yeah. We had no idea there were that year there was like some SNL involvement oh god that's right and we had no yeah, clue yeah yeah but so we had planned to see vince someone smartened us up to the snl thing so now like our wind is like out of our sails that we know like what we want to do is not going to work because it's that's just not what the match is focused on mm -hmm. so we waited and talked to vince this is like the tv before the go home tv so we're talking like you know less than two weeks out from wrestlemania and we gave a very, uh, well, hold on. There's one more piece of the story. Before we go in, Mark, there was this really weird thing where Corona was asking people what they're wearing at Mania, and we had to submit them. And I was super pumped about my gear because it was Jets themed stuff in the New York Jets building. And I'll never forget, Prosky goes, Man, you shouldn't have sent him that. I'm like, Why? He says, Nothing, nothing good's going to come. I'm like, I go, Dude, there's no way anyone in this company cares what Kurt Hawkins is wearing at WrestleMania. That's the least of anyone's worries. And that day, we're talking to Vince. We came in, and Corona goes, Oh, Vince said you can't wear that. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm just, to this day, I'm speechless going like, why would he care? Did what they I'm give wearing? you a reason why? I, I'll keep going. Okay. So now <laughs> I know. So now we're going to see Vince. Our pitch is dead, but I'm like, I don't even care about this pitch. I got to ask him like about my gear because no one's making Jabron Kerr Hawkins new gear less than two weeks before Mania. I already paid for that. Like this yeah. is a one time wear for the building that we're in. Like who gives a shit? So Broski takes the lead on the pitch and it's very half winded and we know this is like pointless. And he literally said, Oh, you know, great. You know, but we already have something in mind for that. And I said, Vince, one more thing. Uh, I heard you don't like my gear or whatever. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, is it okay? like, there's, do you know the significance of it? He goes, let me guess the New York jets. And I'm, for, I'm shocked that he like even made that correlation. <laughs> and I go, yeah. And then I just like, I don't know if it like fired me up that we were like getting this back and forth. And then I was like, yeah, you know, WWE's biggest underdog and NFL's biggest underdog in this, you know, in their building, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I like gave him a very compassionate plea as to why I should wear their stuff. And he was like, Oh God damn it. Hawkins, just wear it. And he smacked me on the back. And I was like, <laughs> I went, yeah, I like fired up. And we had this like broskies just watching this whole thing. Just like, what the fuck is going on? And like we God. left, we left feeling, I left feeling great that I won that talk. But unbeknownst to me, I think that just got his wheels spinning about this match that we were never going to have, you know, that yeah. he made. I think that plea got his wheels spinning and he changed everything to make the match with less than, you know, 10 days to go or whatever that it was. so funny. Yeah. What I mean, it, but okay. So then talk to me about like afterwards, because I know you guys, what you defended them against uh, FTR twice and then were you just like not on tv for a chunk of time after that uh so then the paul Heyman regime came in and oh, i don't do not it, think it. he was a fan of hawkins and Ryder. yeah so. <laughs> he was not on board not okay, he no. did not see us as uh guys he wanted to to showcase i guess is okay, the nice nice way of putting it <laughs> yeah um tag team wrestling you mentioned earlier how you know people usually get in the business and they just think about their singles careers they're not mm -hmm. thinking tag team wrestling do you think that that has been another thing that has changed over the course of the last 10 15 years or so of seeing more people kind of coming in guys like ftr like the young bucks like the usos um you know you can kind of rattle off a couple different teams, yeah. new day um guys that have really come in and wanting to to 
to make something more of what the tag division really For is. Sure. What's, what's kind of your take on that? I, I think it can go even further, you know, especially with the, like you said, that the unbelievable talent that's out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think there's, for sure spots for them to main event shows and be showcased even more like where to make it a prestigious thing, you know? Yeah. Not the old school way of two top guys can smash any tag team, no matter what. I always hated yeah. that philosophy. You know, I think there's, there's definitely room to even bring it up even a higher level. And those guys have, but they, I think it, you know, to me, like a young bucks, Usos dream matches. Like, yeah, I, I don't know if there's, that might be my, my number one dream match. I can't think of a single, so that I want to see more than that. Like, even after coming off of, like, this weekend, having, um, you know, the Ring of Honor pay-per-view to, to having NXT as well, seeing both of those shows, and I didn't get to, like, fully watch the NXT show, but seeing, like, New Day regaining, or not regaining, gaining the, the NXT tag titles to FTR and the Briscoes, like, I feel like that was one of, like, the big, buzzy takeaways from, like, both shows. Yeah, was just, for like, sure. The, yeah. the tag division. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what are you seeing in create a pro of of more like tag teams or some like themes and stuff that you're starting to see in uh, what people are bringing to the table? Uh, well, I think like guys like the Young Bucks and FTR, they've changed the game where you can maybe aspire to that more. You know, like you yeah. don't have to be so selfish. You can see the the big picture of being, you know, and I think yeah. they've I love the way that especially FTR has gelled together old school tag team wrestling mm -hmm. and modern day tag wrestling where it's, you know, it makes sense and um, it's very entertaining, you know, to watch and, you know, yeah. you know, like, you know, four guys is always going to be more exciting than two. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. it's just, it, but that's up to you to make it creative and, you know, fun to watch for sure. Um, What are from some other talent that you've had a bit of a heavy hand and working with alongside Pat Buck as well, who mm -hmm. is, you know, of course at AEW, but looking at the Statlanders, uh, caster MJF, even, mm -hmm. um, some of the talent that you've been able to see there and kind of help shape those minds and bodies. It's been, uh, it's been wild. It's, um, I, I really opened creative pro out of like, sh uh, selfish re reasons, you know, WWE, my first run just, Tyler Rex and I were on a tag team. He quit. And then like five days later, I blew my knee out. And it was just like right. the string of bad luck. And then I never had like consistent travel again. And it was driving me insane because I'm just so wrestling obsessed and so in love. And like, I didn't want to be called to TV and be like, you have two segs against this person and be like not prepared. Yeah. So I was driving yeah. all over and going to these different rings. And Pat had just opened a school in Jersey. And he was like, um, this is you know, going really well, I'll open another one in Long Island if you want. And I was like, Psh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I always wanted to be a wrestling coach. I just thought it was something I would do when I was like 55, not 29 <laughs> or whatever it was, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like the, it came from a very selfish place, but it was like, it was just a black, I guess that uh, it also helped in the sense that like, it wasn't this like carny cash grab for me. Right. And it's it's maintained that. And that's also what's maintained its success. So like financially, it's it's never been this like, you know, a money tree for me, but, but certainly not at all. You know, we have this giant building. The, the rent is, you know, astronomical. But when people come there, we just want you to be passionate and love the business and be good for the, the group and, the, and mm -hmm. the vibe of everything. So if like you're a headache or something, we just politely okay. ask you to you can yeah. go to any wrestling school you want, pal. Like yeah. you don't have to be here. Um, and we'd ra we, it's more important to us to have the, the environment and like the like-minded people that just, you know, love the business. And that's why all these students are, are you're, you know, they're seeing all the success, but they also, they don't leave. Like they still MJF mm -hmm. and Max, Max Kester still like, will coach classes, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. he loves it so much and he wants, he wants to keep working hard and knows how important it is to be in the ring that much, you know? Who are some of the names like when you're bringing in like somebody's coming and they're signing up to to work with you and you're trying to figure out who they are as a wrestler and they're kind of rattling off some like people that they aspire to be. Who are those names now? I can imagine what they were, you know, however long ago, but who are people kind of using as examples right now? Um, It's, it's a mixed bag. Uh, and I can't really nobody like really jumps out to me as the one that I get all the time. It's yeah. almost like the success of Creator Pro brings in the uh less qualified candidates should i say then because i feel like if you're like me you know 18 17 year old kid obsessed with wrestling and you're getting ready to graduate high school you know where my school is and where it is it's yeah. the ones who are like i'm sorry i'm trying here i gotta go here and then they don't right they don't right. have the right mindset at all you know what i mean but that's yeah something through the years i've just kind of 
sort of <laughs> dealt with the, like yeah, for yeah, every yeah. honestly for every 20 people that sign up to that school i have one that i think is going to stick around or understands what they're really getting into and that this is like a very difficult thing and it's it's and it's yeah. not even comparable to anything else you'll ever do in your life like where you're, you're a stuntman that acts that travels that mm -hmm. you know that pretend fights like it's just like pretend get gets beat up which is a tough you know selling is a really tough thing to the grasp yeah. for people you know um there's just so much to it that if your heart's not into it or it's just not gonna work out yeah too much work if you're no, not unless like, you're like fully a, invested in a it freak of nature olympic athlete and even then even then but i mean even yeah. then yeah I mean, unless you're kurt angle but still yeah. sometimes it can yeah be but tricky. he he grew to love it though you know he did chris, he chris did. statlander walked in there she never even watched wrestling and no clue about anything. But so how she... did she start? I was just going to ask you about her because she's somebody that I find pretty fascinating. I don't know her very well, but, you know, mm -hmm. I in the locker room with her, I passed her a, a ton during the day. But I feel like she has a pretty cool quality to her. And I, I feel like she brings a ton to the table. I, I always say she's my favorite student ever. Um, <laughs> but she yeah, she I think she had just went to an independent with a friend by an accident. It was like this stuff's pretty cool. And she was already trained to be a stunt woman. So she had oh. like similar a similar kind of yeah. understanding of what we we're doing. And then the more she was there, the more she fell in love with the business. And like it was even a time when she like rolled her ankle pretty bad. And she would still mm -hmm. come and just sit there and like take notes and like yeah really she put was the like effort that in. even being out with a knee injury still yeah. just like hobbling yeah. around she wants to be there just kind of so literally the first one first her. one there last one to leave kind of thing and like yeah truly took advantage of it all and and like she just reaped the benefits of it from putting oh, yeah. that hard work in yeah definitely all right let's talk the podcast um when you guys first started doing the podcast, I don't think the podcasts were necessarily like exactly where they are now either. Um, and it's obvious. How many episodes in are you guys? Oh boy, we just celebrated our fourth year in August. Jeez. I know. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. How has it grown and changed? What are you guys getting from from the podcast? <laughs> like, what What is I mean, the it deal? Was, it, from what we originally thought it was to what it's become. It's a lot of work too. I mean, that oh, is the insane. thing. Like people oh, must sure. be like, oh, just click play and listen and to it. It's like, oh my god, that's another thing. I'm not trying to like it. toot our own horn, but like we've never missed a deadline or a commitment or mm -hmm. something that we, you know, we are saying we're going to provide on our Patreon and we take it very seriously. Yeah. Um, but there's also like there's this honesty and charm about the show that I think people really have fallen in love with. Or Matt and I, we like, you know, that that wrestling figure closet that we were in when we first started in the business because we were scared to death that bob holly was gonna like you know <laughs> hang our bags in the rafters like that that door is couldn't be more open like yeah. we, we say some really you know what people may might think you know humiliating stories in there but we just we air it all out you know we always say full transparency that's what we say in the show like <laughs> and i think that's made people kind of really uh like we've opened up to people more than just being pro wrestlers like you know so mm -hmm. they they root for us like on the television screen but now they know us as people and i think yeah. that's made a big difference uh and we have like an unbelievable team you know smart mark sterling is our producer yeah. from day one it was another creative pro guy and that's how that started um and then we even have like you know a merch guy you know this guy michael kinnick who like does all that stuff and we have our own toy line that's we've crazy several how do i get one of these toys because i feel like i need a redo at my action figure so uh Talk to your, me about it. Your your action figure has the uh the mom has cut the before you're a mom. Before you're a mom. I, I know. I know. I gotta bring that thing back. Okay, so with you being such an action figure aficionado, mm -hmm. what makes an action figure great? Like I was, of course, thrilled that I even got an action figure. Yeah, I never cool. in my life would have imagined that that would even be a realm of possibility. But I'm not gonna lie if I say that I got it and I looked at it and I was like, oh fuck. I wish I wore something else. Well, I that's wish... yeah. It's it's a really a doozy. So it what's should have it would. The problem is it should have more talent involvement, but that the process is already so long that that would slow it down yeah. even more. That that's probably not a realistic thing. But the word we use is toyetic. Something should be toyetic, where it, like you're walking down a toy aisle and it jumps off the shelves at you like that belongs. Yeah. in the action figure space you know, that's something that so any a beige kid would want. skirt doesn't meet those requirements? your figure not toyetic but i will say this and matt and i are big fans of that everyone should at least have one you know what i mean because yes. some kid is deep in their fig fed and their imagination and they need someone to do these backstage interviews yeah they do i mean that's like 
But like if I was a kid, I'd be like super thrilled that you got one, you know? Granted, I think if it came down to me going, do I want Renee Young to do these interviews or do I want me and Jean Okerlund to do these interviews? I would well, get that's an a Okerlund complete, figure for but you, sure. But you've got to have like a, a throwback fed and a modern okay. day fed. So, oh. you, yeah, you know, <laughs> okay. yeah. <laughs> and we we just did get the first Shivani ever last month. So that that was a big deal. Oh, my God. What does that look like? What's he wearing? It's, Is he in a suit? Uh, yeah, he's in a suit with khaki pants and a <laughs> A dub jacket. It's great. They come with the big black desk chair like I'm in now. Yeah, it's pretty oh, cool. see, mine didn't come with a chair. Oh, Shit. They, well, figures have honestly, since that. you've had one, figures have really even evolved since then. You know, you get multiple yeah. heads and hands and things. I remember I had like one of my figures came with the WWE championship for some that was a, ch a chase that's called a chase oh. item so not not everyone has that but that's like a, a bonus thing you would look for okay. like to you know okay. inc incentive a little incentive to yeah. pick it up that yeah. is so funny mm -hmm. um okay so how do you guys figure out who gets action figures in your line um well we have to be like uh kind of spies with uh, <laughs> the rules of AEW talent and WWE uh, Legends deals and stuff. Yes. But we've we found a way to navigate that pretty well with all our connections and sources. And then, you know, like we uh, series three of our major bendies just came out. And we have Chelsea Green. Very, very easy yes. connection there to get her. Sure. Uh, sure. We've both wrestled and become friends with Effie over the past couple of years. Love so he's me got some his, Effie. He's got his first, you know, action figure through our major bendies line. Colt Cabana, another guy that we've known for 15 plus years we were able to get him in and then the fourth one in that particular set is gangrel who's another guy so he's like a legend yeah. and what these particular figures the, they're from like the 90s so like he would have sh would have should have had one then so he fits in like perfectly so it's it's like a nice fun blend and a lot of the fun of it is matt and i are both in our 19th year of pro wrestling so like we've been around so damn yeah. long and we like almost know everybody like <laughs> you know we'll figure <laughs> it out you know one way or the other you got that Danhausen one in there. I see the Danhausen mask. Danhausen, yeah, right yeah, Danhausen, yeah. We were, we made the first Danhausen X for the first ones to get it to market. Oh damn! Yeah, and no longer that must because have, like cleaned because up. it was a dub contract. Yeah, no, sure. no, he's his fan base is crazy, unbe right? Unbelie unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. Holy crap! Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know if you know how to like answer that, but like for different people that have those like ravenous fan bases. What do you think are like some of the ingredients that a wrestler needs in order to get a fan, a fan base like that? I don't have the full, you know, you know, the blueprint to that, but what worked for me and made the big difference for Matt and I is the podcast and the, and our honesty. I think, yeah. I think it's like people know far more about me than just being the losing streak guy now. And I think right. that's like made the big difference, you know? Yeah. And no, that's certainly, that's not something I had as a wrestling fan growing up. You know, I couldn't, mm -hmm tweet ravishing Rick Rude and tell him that he sucks you know I think that's a big <laughs> it's a big difference you know it's a different yeah. world we're living in you know and we're all we're all accessible in one way or another yeah except no. except, Mo except Mox he knows how to just <laughs> Honestly, go, off, go off the grid somehow I'm so jealous of him sometimes I'm like how do you just like not participate in <laughs> like he just doesn't have the headache of worrying I, about what saw, anyone's saying to him I was like, shocked hey. that he did that con this weekend because a lot of fans in our patreon group we interact with all our fans in this facebook exclusive group and people had yeah. went and got his action figure signed and we're like yeah. holy cow like yeah yeah like, no oh, wow. i know he picks and chooses his moments that's for sure um, okay completely switching gears impact why has impact been such a great place for you to land um and yeah i mean just what's it like working at impact you guys have a great roster over there you guys have <clears throat> it's awesome uh yeah so one word opportunity because mm -hmm. what is my talent without opportunity and impact gives me loads of it and there's plenty of opportunity there you know it's it's i got fired i would say within three four days tommy dreamer called me and gave me the the hard pitch on impact yeah. and I, I knew gals and anderson were already going and they're two of my best friends so i was like huh. and uh that just got the ball rolling and it was just such a great decision um yeah. I've had such a great time. So many like just I get to talk and like I'm sure there's people that watch my WWE career and they're not even sure if I like I'm comfortable with a microphone. But if you watch my right. impact career, you'd be like, holy shit, this guy, you know, yeah. so much fun to just be involved in storylines and talk. And, you know, uh, I can't say enough about Jimmy Jacobs and Robert Evans, who I'm sure, you know. Oh, yeah. From, I love from WWE. They, they, they really care about the product and 
Like they never don't have an answer for you. You know, you'd be filming something like, what is this? What's my, you know, what's going on? Yeah. And they, they just know and they care and everything kind of has a beginning and an end and a purpose. And it's just been so fun. And, and like you said, to start the roster so talented, but like there's some just awesome people there, you yeah. know, Eddie, Eddie Edwards, who I've, who I've loved forever. You know, it's just a really, really fun place to work. Jimmy Jacobs and that's wrong. He's still rocking that thing hard or what? He's he's usually dressed like half like a Star Wars person when I see him. But <laughs> it's like it's I don't even like it's so expected. I don't even like, you know, I don't even acknowledge that he's like wearing Obi-Wan Kenobi clothes to yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> the best. So funny. Uh, what uh, what does the holidays look like for you? Do you get a little break? You're going to pump the brakes for a little minute? Uh. I tried, but then like the carniness of me kicked in a promoter mm. offered me a booking on the 30th, but I'll get a free flight now to go to Broski's uh, <laughs> New Year's Eve party in oh, great. in Orlando. Is he, yeah, my, is he taking over the New Year's party from Miz or what? I don't know. He's just, uh, that's the plan this year. So, um, well, actually here, full disclosure, I'm in my parents' basement right now, my childhood mm. home, because my house is getting a renovation. So me, oh my God. me, my wife, and my two girls live with my parents uh for the past month and probably the next Shit. several months while my house gets redone but it's been fun and it's been it's been cool to i i love seeing my parents as grandparents and see them yeah interact with my kids and they it's it's a really is a nice thing and i think when it's all said and done hopefully i have the house of my dreams to go back to but i'll i'll look back on this you know very fondly so i'm sure it's beautiful and lovely um we're also about to embark on the home renovations uh january 23rd we're we're starting it what all are you guys doing what can i be prepared for cuz i'm a little stressed i out think about you just this. have to understand that there is no preparation you just have to like realize that things are going to be a pain in the ass and that's just uh, this is for so for what us all personally are you guys doing uh, we were like, uh, made a massive dormer over my back deck and blowing out the kitchen to double the size. And we'll have this, this huge family room and stuff. Cause we, we just love our town and our house and just, we just yeah. need it to be like a little bit bigger for us, you know, sure. to make it like a forever home. So yeah. the, the real problem with us personally, we live in a flood zone in Long Island. We're like right on the water and very close to the water. Right. So like the, per that. the permits and stuff were like, it was a year and a half headache oh, shit. headache nightmare thing just to even get the okay to start so we're wow. just thrilled. yeah we're we're thrilled to just even be going is it costing you, know? you an absolute arm and a leg a fortune yes a fortune <laughs> yeah. yeah i died we're doing our kitchen and we're doing our third floor bathroom which is just behind me where we're yep. recording right now and um yeah i was full that was another big motivation was getting a, another bathroom upstairs because i was just like i can't be an old man sharing a bathroom with two teenage girls all like that's just yeah. not good yeah we do create a little space yeah. here everyone just yeah. back up for one yeah. quick second um i'm very excited to do this but yeah i feel like going into it it's always longer than you think it's going to be it's more expensive than you think it's which gonna be everyone tells you and it's true yeah. so we're yeah. my wife my wife and i are like Ugh. i mean really the toughest thing for us is my parents home is 25 minutes away from Mm. where the kids still go to school so every morning oh, someone's gosh. taking them driving all the way there and then the one gets out at noon so like you have to like hang out in her hometown and like find errands or things to do or like i have my my gym garage at the house is still active like i'll go there okay. and like work out like yeah that's the toughest part and then someone has to drive back you know at three o'clock to get the five-year-old at her at yeah. kindergarten and stuff yeah so yeah oh my gosh the, the commute the commute that stuff we do, yeah. the things that we do um okay so advice that you have for anybody that's maybe looking to join you at create a pro or they're going to another wrestling <clears throat> school somebody that wants to start to dabble in this world of professional wrestling i think you just need to be committed it's just, it's just like anything else in life if, like you put in the work you're going to reap the rewards of it you know mm -hmm. but you need to be committed and the other thing i always tell people like you will get frustrated because like we talked about earlier like wrestling is just so weird and unique and not like anything else you're ever going to do in your life that there's frustrations are going to come and you have to be able to like just know that there's no instant gratification with wrestling like there's certain things like i can say this is how you do a drop kick and that's how you do it right but this mm -hmm. i can't be like hey this is how your face should be when you get pretend punched in the stomach right you know right. there's things like that that just yeah. take time and reps and it, it, it's a it's a labor of love you know and that's yeah. i guess that's ultimately too if you don't really love wrestling or is it not something that you've been dreaming about it's gonna be a long road because <laughs> it's gonna be a long road even if you love it you know if you yeah. don't love it it's almost gonna be pointless certainly mm -hmm. uh well brian thank you so much for joining me on the pod from your parents house tell everybody i said hello live yeah 
the uh the I, I live in, in the my swimming. sister's basement <laughs> i keep doing the wedding singer thing when i'm down here yeah <laughs> uh, it's great though it's, uh, i mean shit I, I well not that i would want to go live back with my mom but you do reap some rewards dinner's cooked for sure yeah things get cleaned that my mom made my mom stayed with me right before i had nor and she was like making my bed folding down the sheets oh, and yeah. shit. i was like what is this treatment oh, between oh my, my wife and my my mom like i take off a shirt and it's like gets caught before it touches the <laughs> ground and it's washed and folded and done. it's crazy yeah uh blessings to the women yeah, in our yeah. lives totally Just getting shit done yeah all right. Well, I will. Uh, hopefully I'll see you soon down the road. It's been a Hell while. Yeah. So hope, love hopefully that. sooner than later. Cool.